What is up everyone, Jin Hao here back with another investing video and in today's video, we are going to discuss and compare the top three China stock market ETF that you can invest and they are KWEB, MCHI and FXI. And the reason why I am bringing this topic out is because the China market is really interesting lately. The policy makers is right now doing something that the US and also the rest of the world have done in the past two years. And that is what we call quantitative easing in the US or monetary easing. Uh, it's just a general economic term. And right now, China is doing that. And the rest of the world is basically doing what we call monetary tightening because the issues that we are facing right now is actually inflation. And what happened in China is that they have to increase the money supply to stimulate their economy. So, and because of this, we all have already experienced that when the government certain government, okay, when they are actually increasing the money supply, it will actually affect the stock market in a way that the stock market will go up in prices. So what we are expecting right now, or a lot of investors are expecting right now is that when China market is having the stimulus or monetary easing things, the stock market will go up as well. And that's the reason why a lot of us are looking into investing in the China market. And the easiest way to get exposure in China market is basically through investing in ETFs. And that's the reason why we are comparing the top three large cap or China market ETF that we can invest. And without further ado, let's just hop into my computer. All right, before I forget, disclaimer, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not licensed to give you any advice. There is no buy or sell call in this video. They are just purely my opinions and I'm just comparing the top three uh, China market ETF with you and you're going to make your decisions whether or not you want to invest into the China market. And if you want to, then which one you want to invest, that's going to be your own call. All right, but of course, I will share my... Uh, very personal opinion with you along the way. All right, so let's move on. All right, so the ETFs that we are comparing today in this video again is MCHI, which is the iShares MSCI China ETF, KWEB, the Cran Shares CSI China Internet ETF, and FXI, which is the iShares China Large Cap ETF. So let's start with the MCHI first. So this is launched by iShare and the expense ratio comes in at 0.59% and the asset under management is 8.56 billion at a point of recording. So let's compare with KWEB, which has an expense ratio of 0.76% and asset under management of 8.42 billion. And compared to FXI, which has an expense ratio of 0.74. So you can see that they are all having somewhat higher expense ratio as compared to, you know, the typical S&P 500 index ETFs or even the NASDAQ 100 ETFs. But that's not going to be an issue because it's still under 1%. To me, it is totally acceptable. And asset under management, which is, which is AUM for FXI, comes in at the last place in this among these three, coming in at 5.9 billion, which is still considered very high. So as far as asset under management is concerned, as well as the expense ratio, the MCHI is actually the one with the largest AUM and lowest expense ratio, if these are your concern. But again, to me, 5 billion uh, AUM is not a small fund anywhere. And anything less than like 0.8 or 1% expense ratio is actually acceptable. But of course, at the most generic level, the lower the expense ratio, the better it is for investors. But I should also mention that expense ratio should not be the only thing you look at when you are comparing different uh, ETFs that are you know, having a similar exposures. All right, so let's move on to the next thing that I want to share with you. So the next comparison that I want to make is their holdings. What kind of sectors they're exposed to and how much they're exposed to, as well as how many companies they are investing in. So let's start with MCHI. So for MCHI, 
the number of holdings comes in at 564, whereby KWEB comes in at 48 holdings and FXI 50 holdings. Now, let's go back to MCHI. We look at the uh, top 10 sectors. We can see that technology services comes in at 18.8%. Next up is finance, 18.65%. Then retail, about 14%. Uh, consumer, non-durable and durables add up is about uh, 13 to 14%. Health, technology and health services comes in at around 10% in total. And let's look at the top 10 holdings. So the top 10 holdings, Tencent comes in at 11.84 uh, weightage and Alibaba 9.2. So to me, when I look at this, despite, okay, despite MCHI is very diversified as in it has more than 500 companies or holdings, the companies that are waiting in the most, which is Tencent and Alibaba, comes in at 11.84% and uh, 9.2% respectively. To me, it is a little bit top heavy in this case. And the top 10 weighs in at 41%. So again, the top 10 comes in at 41% weightage. So it has 500 over companies. So the rest is just going to be very, very small. And that's the first uh, sort of like concern that I will have when I look at this ETF. But it is not necessarily bad. We still have to go through the rest. All right. So let's go to KWEB. So KWEB number of holdings is just 48. So which is not very uh, diversified, but it's still very diversified. Granted that, you know, you are investing in the top Chinese company, put it this way. All right. So 48 is going to be fine. And let's look at the top 10 sectors. So technology services comes in at 48.95%. So you can see that it is actually very, uh, you know, it is leaning towards technology. It looks like, you know, a QQQ in, in the sense that, okay, almost half of the holdings are exposed to technology. Then retail, you have 23%. Healthcare, 11 point. 93% consumers comes in at like 7%. Now let's look at the top 10 holdings. Alibaba comes in at 9.81% and Tencent comes in at 8.97%. So these two top holdings are very similar to MCHI. The only thing is the first is now the second and the second is now the first. Weightage wise, it is still quite top heavy because they comes in at close to you know, 19 to 20% for the top two holdings only. It is not as top heavy as MCHI, but it is still quite top heavy if you were to ask me. And the rest we have like uh, Meituan Class B, JD.com, NetEase, JD Health, KE Holdings, Pintoto, Trip.com, and Full Truck Alliance. So top 10 weighs in at 59.59%, which is close to 60%. And from here, we can also see that this ETF is really very uh, technology kind of ETF. So let's go to the FXI and have a look. So FXI, the number of holdings is 50, which is two holdings more than the KWEB. So again, it is not overly diversified issue, if you ask me, compared to MCHI. And let's look at the top 10 sectors. So finance comes in at 30%, technology comes in at 17.28%, retail comes in at 14.82%. Then you have health, consumers, and energy, all those, okay, falling at the, you know, fourth place and beyond. Okay, so now, for the top 10 holdings for FXI, first is Alibaba, comes in at 8.82%, Meituan comes in at 8.44%, Tencent comes in at 7.86%, JD comes in at 6%, China construction comes in at 4.67%. Now, you can see that if we were to look at the top 10 holdings, at least for the first few, like Alibaba, Meituan, Tencent, JD, these are actually technology companies. So the top holdings are actually technology companies, but in terms of the sector exposure, finance comes in at 30%, whereas tech comes in at only 17%. So if you were to ask me, my opinion at least, this is my personal opinion, it is a little bit more well diversified. All right, so you have the great tech giant at the top, but maybe out of this top 10 list, you got 
a little bit more of the retails, health, and as well as finance company. So in terms of diversification or at least well diversification, I would vote for FXI. Now, some people might ask why it's not the MCHI because the problem with MCHI is 500 over companies is a little bit overly diversified, just like the S&P 500 index ETF. Secondly, it is very top heavy when it comes to you know, Tencent and Alibaba coming waiting in at 20%. It feels like you know Apple and Microsoft's role or exposure within the NASDAQ 100 uh, index. So again, if I were to make a choice, I would vote for FXI because it is more well or nicely, properly diversified in this sense. I should also mention that between these three ETFs, the top holdings are more or less the same because those are the giant companies in China. So the only difference is basically the weightage. So you are exposed to the similar company in a different weightage. So your decisions or your votes should be made based on how much you want okay, to expose to certain companies or certain sectors. So the next thing that I want to discuss and compare is actually the liquidity between these three ETFs. Now, these three ETFs, they are the top ETFs when it comes to China market or those Chinese company. Now, they are all very liquid per se. However, there is one thing that has become a deal breaker to me and I'm going to explain to you now. It may or may not affect you, but I'll still share and discuss with you guys. All right, so with ETF.com, it only display the average daily volume in terms of dollar right over here. So I'm not really that interested when it comes to uh, dollar value. I'm going to share with you from my broker's platform. We want to know the volume in terms of quantity. But again, just in case you are wondering, the volume in dollar term for MCHI is about $384 million. KWEB is about $741 million average daily volume in dollar term. And FXI comes in at $1.2 billion. So in terms of dollar value, we can already see that FXI is the champion right over here. Now, let's go into my broker's platform right now. All right, now let's discuss about the liquidity of these three ETFs and let's start with MCHI. And right over here at my broker's platform, you can see that the average volume comes in at 4.8 thousand. And that is the volume for the day. Right now, at a point of recording, the market has not yet opened. So this would be the previous days. So the next number whereby it says AVG, which is the average volume, uh, that from the description, it says that there's the average daily trading volume over 90 days. So let's just uh, remember that this 7.11 million average trading volume for MCHI. And let's look at the next one, which is KWEB. So next, let's look at KWEB. And right over here, we can see that volume for the day is 40.5 thousand, whereas the average volume, the average daily trading volume over the 90 days period comes in at 24.6 million, which is way more than MCHI. But the next thing we want to see is FXI. So for FXI, the volume of for the day comes in at 60.8 thousand and the average daily trading volume for the over 90 days period comes in at 40.7 million, which is, I would say, one notch better than KWEB. So when it comes to the ETF itself, liquidity wise, volume wise, I would say that FXI is going to be the best choice right over here. But there's another thing that I want to discuss is actually the option market. Because personally, I trade options as well. I buy options and I sell options for cash flow. So let's look at the option open interest of these three ETFs because open interest refers to how many people are interested in trading the options for these ETFs. So for FXI, it comes in at 3.63 million when it comes to open interest. And there's one more thing that I want to share with you is for FXI, you can see that you have 
a lot of option contracts with different uh, debt to expiry to choose from. So you can see that you have the regular options and also the weekly options. So basically, there are a lot of choices and the open interest comes in at total up 3.63 million. Now let's go to KWEB, which is the second best when it comes to volume just now. And the option open interest comes in at 2.02 .02 million which is not too shabby as well and we when it comes to the option uh, contracts choices you have a lot of regular and also a couple of you know weekly options to choose from as well so not too bad now let's look at mchi which is the one with the lowest volume among the three and not to this to my surprise that okay the option open interest comes in at 40.5 thousands only and basically you do not have weekly options to choose from so if you are an investor or a trader who deal with options be it you are buying options for the leverage capital gain or you like to sell covered costs for etfs that you already own or you like to buy etf by selling puts then this is something that you need to know in my opinion, MCHI is going to be the worst choice among these trees. And KWEB is the better one, but the best would be FXI. So by now, you probably already know that what's the champion among these three in my heart, and that's going to be FXI. It is better in terms of diversification. In my opinion, it is not overly diversified, and you have quite a balance in between the finance and also the tech sectors. And also when it comes to the liquidity, be it the ETFs itself or the option market, FXI is the champion right over here. So why not let me know in the comment section below which one is your choice and share with us the reasons why you prefer one over another. Again, this video is not a buy or sell call. I'm just putting all these three top choices onto the table and have a comparison, discuss about it. So there's no buy or sell call, no financial advice right over here, but you're welcome to share your opinions down in the comment section below. With that being said, that'll be all for this video. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe for more content just like this one. Turn on the notification bell, you know those stuff. All right, so yeah. That's all and I will see you when I see you. Peace out.